What does 150 grand approximately, 350 grand approximately, and 650,000 buy you in Australia today, 2023? Uh, I'm here with my mate Aaron. Aaron G'day. from Boat Buy. G'day so guys. You are, well, we've known each other probably for about 10 years now, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, I can remember coming down the spit when you had the boat brokerage. And, yeah. Um, yeah, all the different surveys and, and, and jobs over the years. Lots and of memories. So Aaron's a qualified marine mechanic and a, a very well-known marine surveyor here in Australia. So all the Aussies watching probably already know you. Um, your company is called Boat Buy, and I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Um, but we went, uh, we searched the recent Sydney Boat Show and the uh, MW Marine Open Day, which was on at the same time, um, just to see, uh, get a bit of a broad spectrum uh, of what is available and what your money buys you in with today's dollars. So there are some boat show specials that we'll mention. Some of them are gonna be already sold and you might have missed out um, and some of them uh, might still be available. So don't take everything that we are sharing with you as gospel. It's just an indication of what your money buys you with your dollars today. Um, and we're probably just gonna make some observations and you know see what we can uh, valuable information we can share with you guys on each category um, that we uh, price category that we had a look at, and we are keeping it sort of from that six hundred fifty thousand and below. We're not going into the super ridiculous stuff that I sometimes cover on the channel. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep, absolutely. Although, how long's a piece of string? I know, you can right? Get carried away with a boat. Okay, so let's get started. So one hundred fifty thousand. Talking about Australian dollars, um, and I'll just start listing out. Uh, we didn't look at every boat at the boat show. We were pretty busy, but we looked at many. So we saw the Beneteau on 7. That was 189,000. Uh, we saw the Jeannot Mary Fisher 695 for 190,000. Uh, we saw the Flipper, uh, the 650 DC. That was 165,000 on special for 145. Uh, we saw the Parker 700 Pilot House at 163,000. Quite a few Arvors in this price category. They're, they're pretty um, well priced. We saw the 625 Sportfish at 117,000, the 675 Weekender at 135,000, and the 705 Sportfish at 145,000. Uh, we then saw the Quicksilver 605 Cruiser for 185,000, uh, the Capelli, the Tempest 650 at 135,000. Um, then some, some Aussie builds, the, the Matrix, uh, the Matrix MXV uh, on special for 116,000, retailing at 139, uh, and the MX22 uh, on special for 156,000, retailing at uh, 172. Uh, then we got the Stedgecraft, the 580 Islander Deluxe, uh, 90 grand, uh, retailing at 99, and the 610 Monaco Deluxe. 99 grand uh, retailing 112 uh, and then we saw the malibu uh, the 22 uh, lsv a little bit more at the 174 and the good old haynes signature the 640 f uh, at 149,000. Um, so we've we've both picked some special mentions for each category so um, my first special mention in this around about 150 grand mark uh, it was the arvor 705 um, I, I particularly like that one. We saw the two smaller Arvors. They felt, um, for the money, uh, not having the side opening doors, a little bit more cramped inside. I'm imagining someone who moved into the 705 would uh, be really happy if they were keeping it on a swing mooring here in Sydney. That is an awesome boat. The amount of space you got out the back, the side opening doors, uh, outboard power, obviously, so you can lock it up and leave it. Um, and it just seems like a functional boat. And at that 145 grand, that was probably one that I, I thought was worth a special mention. Yeah, absolutely. So um, not having a trailer is a big burden off somebody's chest. Yep. Because you, you jump on the boat, you know, you're almost ready to go. Yeah. Um, it saves a lot of that hassle. You, you, you're likely going to use the boat a little bit more. You don't have to store it at your house. Um, there is going to be some maintenance considerations. You're going to have to anti-fail it every year and it might cost you a little bit more. Yep. Um, but and it's probably going to get some more wear and tear on out in the sun. Absolutely. Salt. Yep. It will deteriorate a little bit quicker. But at the end of the day, if you're buying this boat to use it, yep, um, you shouldn't be too concerned about 
you know, five, ten years down the track. Yeah. Because you wanna you wanna maximize your time on it. You're only using it on weekends and, and whatever else. Yep. And it could be a really good option. You probably want to be living reasonably close to the ocean though, because that's only going to be a benefit if you're within a reasonable drive yep. from the water to your your joint, because that's when a trailer might be more um, more useful, which is probably one of the one of your special mentions. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So um, I would pick a Stagecraft 580. Yep. yep. Um, and, the, and the reason why is because you've still got that single axle trailer. So if you're new to boating and you're not sure how hard or how easy it's going to be, yep. having that single axle, a little bit less maintenance, easy to move around, lighter boat, um, and it's going to potentially push you more to use it. So for someone who's never towed a boat before, um, dual axle to single axle, it is it just a, a much more hassle towing something with a dual axle or is it harder? Yeah, so once you go the dual axle, there's certain requirements. If it's over two tonne, you're gonna have to have electronic brakes and breakaway systems. More Under complex. Under two tonnes, you're gonna have hydraulic brakes, but there's, 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 there's just more moving parts. Yep. Um, I don't know if anybody's tried to actually move a twin axle trailer, but just pushing it to the left or to the right because you've got that extra friction of the two tires. Yep, yep. It's much harder to push into a spot. Yep. Um, and those are sort of probably the disadvantages of a twin axle. Yep. Um, but if you know you like boating and you're using it, and you've already tried the single, that's when you're going to go. All right, I need the extra space. I'm going to I'm going to go for something with a twin axle. And so, if you live far away from the water and it's a, no advantage to you having a swing mooring, and you're going to go for a trailer, but you've never tried it before, the suggestion is try a single axle. It's yep. simple, not too complex, and you know your experience is probably. The easier it is, this is a theme of all boating, mm -hmm. the more likely you're gonna do it. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it, it does come back to handling because people will go, well, I want a 640 or a seven meter boat. Yep. Um, and the bigger the boat, the heavier it weighs, the better it's gonna handle. Yep. So there is always some element of compromise. Yep. It's just finding out what works for you. So um, I'll t go on to my next special mention. I don't know anything about this brand, but I just saw it. Um, and I enjoy uh, doing some wake surfing up on the river on my mate's Nautique, which is not the boat that I'm mentioning because it's way more expensive. But those are some of my best summer memories, having those days uh, on the river. Uh, some of you wakeboarding, some of you wake surfing. It's a really fun day if you're away from the ocean and you've got a river or a lake to play on. And we saw that Matrix MX-22, never driven it, can't really speak for it personally, but at 156 grand on special from 172, um, if that's what you're chasing, you know, if you've got kids, um, you know, and, that, and you want to give them something to do, what a great activity! Yeah, you know, that's just awesome memories right there, and that's probably a good stepping stone if you do decide, in my opinion, to get into the, the you know, the Malibus or the Nautiques. Um, you go from something like that. It seems logical to me. Absolutely, yeah. You, you get a chance to try out wakeboarding and you see what you like and what you want. Yeah. Um, and, and then it's going to have a, a decent resale because it's not really expensive to start with. Yep. Um, yep. It'd be a great, like you said, a great stepping stone. Yeah, awesome. And then you had another one, another Aussie build. Yeah, so that good old Haynes signature. We yep. all, all know Haynes. Yep. Um, look, uh, Haynes 640F at 149K. I've seen guys pour, you know, 80, 100K in there. 80 model Hanes, rebuilding, replacing, repowering. Yep. Um, where they would have been better off just buying a brand new boat, even if they financed it. Yep. Um, they would have got a lot more back when they go to sell it. Right. Okay. And and what are they rebuilding? Are these just older Hanes where they're having to pull out the floors and? Look. So ultimately, everything lasts for a period of time. Yep. Um, and if you buy a really old boat and you rebuild it, you've really got to do the maths and go, could I have just bought a brand new boat? Yep and being in a better position financially, even though it would have been a bigger outlay to start with, yep. if you factor in what you get at the end, yep. um, it, it can sometimes be a much better option. Yeah, so I mean, I don't have my uh, sales experience. Um, I was selling boats for 20 years before getting into this channel. The last two years was more uh, expensive uh, Sydney Harbour vibe. So you've probably seen a lot more of the Haynes's, but it's everybody knows this brand in Australia. They're, you know, it's, yeah. it, it's not a corner of Australia that doesn't have, hasn't heard of a Haynes signature. Look, I'm big on brands. Yep. Um, if a brand has been around for 30 years and yep. they're still here, yeah. um, that says a lot about them. Yep. Um, you see some, some brands that come and go. Um, basically what happens is sometimes they make fatal mistakes in the, in the, the construction of the boat mm -hmm. and it catches up to them 10 years later. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm, I'm very big on, although it's gonna cost you more to start with, 
How yep. long has the brand been around? How many boats have they sold? You're going to have a better chance of a good experience. And your net return is probably going to be better when you move the boat. So interesting. Let's move on to the 350 grand. We're still talking Australian dollars. I know of you, a lot of you are watching from America. So we've got the Beneteau um, on 8. Um, that was the uh, 284 grand. Uh, we had the on 9 uh, at 330 grand on special from 390. Um, we had the Flyer Sun Deck 8 at 225 grand on special from 265. Um, the on uh, sorry, the Mary Fisher, Jeanneau you know Mary Fisher 795, 250 grand, a lot less than our 350 mark, obviously. Um, the Sea Ray, okay, this is, could kind of cross the 150 to 350 because it's the 230, the SPX 230. Neat boat, that one. 253, but it was on special for 191. Um, we had quite a few sea rays. Uh, the SDX 270 outboard uh, at 356 grand. The SDX 270 um, at 373 grand, but on special for 269. Wow. Um, the SDX 250 outboard, 315 on special for 259. Um, we had the Scout, so that was the 215 uh, XSF, that's 200 grand. Um, and then we had the flipper, the 800 DC, on special 229 grand from 244 retail. Uh, Cobia, uh, one that some of you may or may not be familiar with in this country. Uh, the 240 CC, the single outboard for 256 grand and the twin outboard for 259 grand, not much difference there. And the, the 280 DC uh, with the twin motors at 379 grand. Uh, Catalina, a, a new brand, so they were, basically that was a, um, a prototype that we saw at the show. They're being built in Turkey from, from memory. The V27 at 369 grand. Cobalt, and a lot of you will be familiar with these. The R4, 24 feet outboard at 249 grand. The R6, 25, outboard at 200, uh, 359 grand. The R8, that's 27 feet stern drive. 289 grand. Uh, the CS23 stern drive, stern drive for 199, so that's kind of in between the two uh, categories there. Uh, Nimbus, a brand that I uh, know well, the T8 at 284 grand. The Weekender 9 at 349 grand. Um, the Arvors, so we had the uh, 805 Sportfish, 177 grand. Again, that's sort of in the middle there. The 905 Weekender at 328 grand. Uh, the Quicksilver 675 Sun Deck at 367 grand. Uh, the Grady Whites, uh, we had the Adventure 218. That was on special at 285 from 315,000. Uh, then we got the Nautiques, the Nautique Super Air S23 at 339 grand. Uh, we saw a Malibu in there, the 21. LX Wake Setter at 193. Um, so that's all the boats we saw. Um, so you had a special mention in there, Aaron, that was the Sea Ray. Absolutely, so 270 outboard, it's, it's, it's like the ultimate harbour boat. Yeah. Um, I see a lot of people get hung up on having beds in cabins, but this is just all seating, fill it with people, have an awesome day out, an awesome day boat. Yeah, I agree, I mean, um, I first, my first job in the 1990s was preparing boats for salesmen and they were sea rays. They were uber popular back then and they still are today. And, uh, and if, over the 20 years of selling boats, there's always been constant demand for a sea ray. They're, they're very well built and they get the ergonomics right on those mm. things. You know, if you want to take a, a big family or a couple of families out for the day and that, that 270 is going to have a bucket load of space. They're, they're relatively beamy compared to some of the European um, competitors they're a comfortable cool looking thing and stick the outboards on the back you can't really go wrong with that absolutely so, agreed um so i'll throw one of my uh, favorites in there so this was the the nimbus the weekender nine um uh awesome brands i've always referred to them as the riviera of sweden the quality is on par with riviera boats which i consider to be one of the best brands out there uh, genuinely and nimbus is up there as well they're just fantastic boats what I like about the Weekender 9, I've tested this boat um, in France, it's the modern sports cruiser. So if you think back to 
uh, the stern drive sports cruiser days of 10 and 20 years ago. This is now following a similar style, but doing it in a new and unique way because you've got an adventure style hull, which is gonna be more capable in the ocean, go faster and use less fuel. You have an epic sun protection with a big roof and it's outboard power. So I think you, you can't go wrong with the weekend at nine. Yeah, look, I've, I've only done a handful of them and the Grand's obviously growing, growing in the country. Yeah. But the ones that I have done, I've been really impressed with. So they were unknown here in Australia really a couple of years ago. So whereas you're very conservative with your brand approach, I sometimes would be inclined to take a little bit more risks because yep. I've seen brands, you know, I was involved in it, the Axapar um, yep. from day one in Australia and I saw that go from zero to hero. And so I see Nimbus as having that similar um, future uh, success. Well, they're having the success. So, but they, they were unknown here three years ago. Um, yeah. in this country so and what are they so what are they like overseas I, I don't know too much about their yeah Scandinavia in Sweden they're very very popular that's yep. that's their home turf so you see them in high numbers like you would go to a marina here and see yes. Rivieras um, they are um, they it feels like they're exploding in America I don't know you guys watching can let me know just by the volume of messages that I get from Americans asking me about yep. them on East and West Coast. They're, they're always asking about Nimbus versus Axapar, Saxdor and other brands. So um, I, I guess they are uh, getting noticed there. And I see a lot of them, or I saw a lot of them in Majorca um, and South of France last year. So they, they must have some penetration to those markets as well. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, that's a really good indicator of how they're gonna do here. If, they, if they're really popular in another country, yeah, um, and they've been around for a couple of years in another country, yeah, then likely once the brand gets known, yep. they'll take off here. Yep, um, we we've got a much smaller market, so to speak. Yeah, we do. But um, yeah, definitely one to look out for. And and our our country can only support so many brands. We we're not America. We don't have hundreds of millions of people. We got yeah. twenty five. So <laughs> so it's like we can't support in large numbers all the brands. So it is something you do need to be conscious of when picking your boat, if you're thinking about long-term resale. So yes. So you had one in there. Yeah, so I would take the Cobia 280 DC. Yeah. Um, really popular in the States. Yep. Um, it looks like a bargain. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I, I like the looks of that boat, the space. Um, it's It's got Sydney Harbour day boat vibe yep. with f fishing friendly. Yeah, look, center consoles with fishermen are always going to be popular. Yeah. Um, I think it's... I think it was a dual console, that one. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Dual, dual console. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, just good all-rounder at that price point. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to be hard to beat. And and whilst reasonably new to Australia, it's established in America, so... Yes. Yeah. And also, the guys who are bringing it in here are, are very well established locally, so... That's always another factor, like how well established is the actual dealer? Yeah. Uh, have they been around for years? Yeah. They're not going anywhere? Correct. Um, you know, I think it's it's a pretty safe bet. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go back to Nimbus again, guys. Um, and Nimbus not paying me to do this, by the way. <laughs> so it's the T8. So, um, you know, I've just toured that boat. I haven't driven it yet. I will be doing that soon. But just a really great little adventure day boat. If you've got a young family, you want to get out and do some sun and fun um, and have the ability to picnic on board you can only overnight for two people so it's not really full overnighting uh vibe but it is possible it's got a decent toilet in it but just again the quality is exceptional um, but it really lends itself to um, water sports activities you know towing uh towing boards towing biscuits that sort of stuff and um, setting yourself up with wing dingers and having a having a foiling surf or whatever you want to do it's great for those sorts of things but also they, uh, a lot of these Nimbuses really lend themselves towards pulling up on the beach and stepping off on the bow and going to cafes. And that's just a really great thing we can do in Sydney. Mm -hmm. I was on the Gold Coast yesterday. That's another place where you would do that um, all year round. So, so yeah, big fan of that. And at 284 grand, um, right, right in there, below our 350 limit for that one. Absolutely. And in that um, particular 350, the only thing I, I would mention is there is you know, three, four other brands, you know, Genoa, yep. Beneteau, um, and they're all well worth looking at. Yeah. Um, you're going to get similar options for similar pricing. Yeah. Um, and there, there's some other good brands that we didn't mention in the special mentions, but yep. 
we can, well worth a look. We've only got so much time. Yep, exactly. Okay, 650 grand. What did we find? All right, let's go back to the top of this list. So uh, we had the... All right, so it was the Beneteau GT32 at 647 grand. I've tested their 36, and I've also uh, keep an eye out for the GT45 now on the channel as well. So that's the entry level to uh, that model. Um, the Flyer 9 Space Deck, uh, 426 grand, uh, reduced to 396 at the show. Uh, the Flyer 9 Sun Deck, 436, uh, reduced to 389 at the show. Uh, the Genot Mary Fisher 895, that's with twin engines for 430 grand. Um, and the Genot Mary Fisher, that's going to be the 1095 for 615 grand. That's with twins and a joystick. Um, we've got the Sea Ray, we've got the SCX 290 outboard, that's going to be a, a beast of a day boat at 477 grand. Um, we've got the uh, SDX 290 at 403 grand. Uh, we saw the Scout. 255 LXF at 410 grand. Um, we saw the Flipper 900 ST also on my channel um, at 439 grand, retailing 459. And scrolling down, Boston Whaler. I haven't tested any Bostons yet. If you're selling Bostons, get in touch. I'd love to get you on the channel because they are a high quality brand. 280 Vantage, uh, the twin outboard at 605 grand and the 280 Dauntless at 522 grand. Uh, the Capellis from Italy, the Tempest 1000, again, tested that on the channel, 459 grand, that's for the walk around. The Tempest 38 on special for 660 grand from 718. Uh, then we saw the Grady Whites, the Canyon 271. Uh, you can see some larger Grady tests on my channel. I think that's one of the best offshore hulls I've tested so far. Uh, 549 grand on special from 595. Uh, the Nautiques, you know, as I said, my buddy's got one. Uh, some of my best summer memories are on these things. The Super Air Nautique G23 for 439 grand. And that was it. Let's um, get to our special mentions. Uh, so I can't I can't go past the Jeannot Je Mary Fisher 1095. Um, that is, uh, I've driven that thing in the ocean, I've driven it in the flat water, it's on the channel if you're interested. That is a really great family boat. Um, the Beneteau group as a whole, where, where Jeannot is, is uh, under the, that umbrella, have some very clever um, designers because they make use of the available space um, in very sensible ways. So if the design is something that you're interested in and space utilization, which many of us are, because we're on boats and we don't have much space. <laughs> so, um, that's a cool boat, and it'll keep young families um, very happy for, I'd say, up to about three days on board, um, no problems. And I also see that brand as a stepping stone. If you have, say, a Riviera or something else in your future, a back cove, uh, whatever it is, is, as your final boat, but you've got all these other annoying expense, expenses like school fees or <laughs> you, the wife wants a new kitchen or something <laughs> and you can't spend that much money right now. As you know, Mary Fisher, in my opinion, is a great one to keep you happy now. Um, it'll tick all the boxes and you will sell it for a decent amount of, amount of money because there's good demand. Yeah, yeah. look, I, I, I'm big on brand and yep. the Juno brand in Sydney, for instance, is very strong. Yeah. Um, I believe they've sold a lot of boats. We, you see a lot of them out there. Yep. And, and you see a lot of customers trading up, down, sideways. So the resale on them is really good. Yep. And outboards, I mean. Exactly. Yeah. So they won't do everything, but as an all-rounder, I think it's it's good. So um, what did you have? Oh, we both, we both had our name on one, actually. Yeah, yeah. So I think the Nimbus 305 Coupe. Yeah. Um, that is a really good contender for somebody who they want that overnighting capabilities. Yep. And they want that in enclosure. Yep. Away from the wind. Yep. Um, and, and a good all rounder. It's slower than the 1095 because it's a single inboard shaft drive. This is the only shaft diesel, actually, in, that we saw. Yes. Um, I, I've, again, tested that one. It's on the channel. That was in New Zealand. Um, and. A great boat. The yes. accommodation, the quality of the fit out. Um, you know, it's you do need to 
um, get used to parking it if you are reversing it into a marina berth with a crosswind because it's a single shaft diesel with prop warp so it's going to want to pull you one way but it's got bow and stern thrusters yep. and a side opening door so you just get used to that and yep. it's it's a little bit of practice you'll be fine um, but yeah so we, we both liked that one and I think they sold a couple at the show I think they sold two yeah, so. look, so from a surveyor's perspective, I want to see these more of these because 10 years down the track, yeah. with that single shaft, yeah. um, you know, we're going to be seeing the benefits of that and people are still going to be able to use this boat yeah. with less of an outlay. That, so that is a boat that you would keep for a longer period of time, whereas many boats you might consider turning them over in two to four year mark to get your best money back. Would you say a lot of these European brands would fit in that category, you know, turn them over? Absolutely. So for for um, financial return, I'm still focusing. That's right. On. Yeah, I think the first five years is the, the happy period. Yeah. Where you you don't have to spend much. Yeah. Um, after the five year five to ten, it starts to get a little more expensive, and then ten onwards is when you got to think. All right, you know, a certain things going to need to be repowered, refit. Yeah. Um, it can be depending on where it lives and how it's been maintained, but yeah. there can be some big expenditure after that 10 year period. Because remember guys, it's a boat. You're always just signing up to a service <laughs> yeah. and maintenance schedule, as whatever you do. So yeah. don't think that these things don't come with, with expenses. Um, so uh, one that I had on the list, you, you disagreed with me because uh, of the brand, but it's the Flipper 900 ST. Yep. Um, uh, again, I've tested it, it's on the channel. I think that one has future potential yep. because it was good quality great driving and packing a lot of boat into a small amount of space so i specifically am talking to people who've had an adventure boat before something like an axapar 28 and they like the performance and the convenience that gives them and the outboards yep but um, they want overnight capability for a family and they don't want to, or they haven't got access to bigger berthing. So if you are limited, say here in Mossman, where it's hard to get a berth, and you've got your 30 foot berth and you can't get a bigger one, or you don't want to upgrade to a 40 foot because it's more expensive, yep. or you've got a berth at your house, or your, your strata in your apartment on the Gold Coast or something, and you're limited in size, I think that's an awesome boat. Yep. And it's probably not gonna sell in huge numbers. It's probably not gonna be a brand that goes ballistic like Jeannot, Mary Fisher's but it could be one of those ones that um, gets a cult following. Absolutely, look, I think everything comes at a price. Yeah. And um, I can see some good value in, in the price. Well, yeah, 439 grand, it's a lot cheaper than all these other ones. Exactly right. Yeah, so. Exactly right, so, and because you're buying new, um, it's, it's gonna be a safe bet. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, and then the last boat, what did you have on there? So I had the Beneteau GT32. Yes. So obviously hard on my brands. Yeah. Um, another good option. It'd be very similar to the Nimbus, but it doesn't have the shaft drive. Yep. Um, but just a well-built day boat. You can sleep on it. Um, and it, it sort of ticks that 30 to 40 foot box. Yep. Where you, you might go from a trailer boat to a, a 30 footer. Yep. Before you go to that, you know, bigger twin diesel, you know, a million dollars plus. Yeah. Yeah. Type that thing. Makes perfect sense. And I guess, yeah, you know, you're you're at multiple surveys every week, and you have been for a long time. Uh, you're picking. I'm picking up on this brand preference because you've seen <laughs> the pain that some people go through when they haven't stuck to something that's known. Yes. I guess. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Look, it's brand, brand, brand. And we shouldn't say pain because boating brings pleasure, and we work hard to enjoy our pleasure time, and that's what boating is all about. But you know, you just need to be conscious of where you're gonna spend your money and how much you're gonna get back, I guess. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it's all about the price. Mm. So if something, if someone buys a boat and they buy it brand new for cheaper, mm. they've just got to expect that they're gonna get a little bit less when they sell it. It's just when they're not pitched apples for apples mm. and you see you know, something pitched up against another thing that isn't the same quality, mm. that's when you, you see pain because they've sold it as something that's more expensive yep. and then it, it's not. Yep. And 10 years down the track, it becomes a different story. So maybe that's some topics for videos for us for the future, just to try and um, uh, digest all the different production techniques that are available to builders and explain yes. it to our, if you guys are interested in that, we can maybe invest some time into explaining the different ways boats are built internally and externally. Um, so you can use that information to make your choices. Because in my opinion, you know, every boat builder 
uh, they're building with an end goal in mind. And if your end goal are customers who enjoy lakes, yep. so be it. If your end goal is customers who want to do offshore journeys, um, you know, all the time, then that's a different purpose. So everything is built for a, to a purpose and for a price. And you know, I guess that's where we might be able to help you guys. Yeah, we can look. I mean, as a surveyor, I look at it as specifications. Yeah. You know, is this a timber cord stringer or is it like a top hat style glued in? system yep um, there's going to be differences in cost and longevity yep um, but yeah we look at specifications and that yep. sort of dictates your long-term longevity of the boat yeah whereas I'm looking at design and operation of the boats and how is it how is it going to actually physically work with yes. you and your wife and your kids uh, and is it going to be popular in the the wider market sort of thing so anyway Absolutely. if you're interested in that content guys um, let us know leave some comments uh, we can always invest the time yep. we've got the experience the knowledge and we've yep. the contacts so uh, let us know and let us know if you enjoyed this piece of content too uh, I go to boat shows all around the world so there's no reason why I can't do it somewhere else Aaron Thank you, mate. Not a problem. Thanks for <laughs> Always good show. fun. All right. I'll leave a link to Aaron's company, Boat Buy, uh, in the description below. If you are surveying a boat in Australia, you cover east coast, up and down the east coast? Yeah, so currently Queensland and Sydney. Yep. Um, we're, we're can Gold you coast travel? Based. Yep. We can travel anywhere for the, for the right boat. For the right boat. Yep. Um, and we are looking at expanding in the coming years. Yep, yep. But um, slow and steady. And you've got a really functional website uh, that explains the whole process um, so it's, it's, you know, having gone through Aaron's survey process on the broker salesman side, the, the reports are very professional, unbiased and electronically delivered. So I've always valued them. That's why I always came back. Nah, thank you, Dan. I'm, I'm flattered. Awesome. All right, mate. Thanks, guys. See you on the next one.